begin to pray. I draw that fire from that from heaven and I release that fire upon every situation in my life, in my destiny, every roadblock, every demonic power that I've had my destiny, that I've had my promotion, had my finances born in the name of Jesus. I release fire upon you. I release fire upon you. Open your mouth. Fire that prayer. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Praise the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Fire. 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 Amen. We're not going to take long. Amen. Amen. God, we already done the Lord this evening. Yes, Amen. Sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. I love you, Lord. And I my voice oh, to oh, my soul
everything that the Lord is, we say, glory be to your name. You are worthy to receive all glory, all honor, all majesty, and dominion. Even as you have created all things, they are for your pleasure, the honor of the Creator. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your love. Thank you for your precious children that have gathered here. Thank you for others who are on their way. Thank you for our folks in New Jersey, our people in New Jersey, our churches in New Jersey. They are also joining us in tonight's service. Lord, glorify your name. The visit goes to us. May our heart in that take good matter. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the word to us. Hallelujah. Shout fire. Amen. We don't be better service. Shout fire. Shout We thank the person of the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. Hallelujah. And also, we thank our most highly esteemed Papa Joshua Aguila. Say, I love you, Papa. I love you, Papa. So nice to see you. So nice to see you again. All right. Let's take our seats quickly. We want to just show you something. We want to show you something quickly that you, you need to give um, priority to in your life. It's something you need to give priority to. Now, in John chapter 16, look at John chapter 16. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. There, there's something I want to introduce you to. Oh, let's put it this way. There's a person I want to introduce you to. Amen. We receive it. There's a, and this person is someone that people have never really taken time to examine. Rather, they give a mistaken identity to this person. John chapter 16. Are you in John chapter 16? Yes, Please answer us. Are you in John chapter 16? Yes, now look at verses 13. John 16 verses 13. What does he read? He says, How be it when he let's read. How be it when he the spirit, the spirit of truth, of truth is come, he will guide you into, into all truth. truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever speak whatsoever he hears, he hears that shall he speak. He and he will show you things to, to come. come. Now, the people Jesus was talking to were his disciples, and his disciples were not prophets. Until this time, they never knew what it is like. They never knew what it is like to know the things to come. They had never been opportune in their lives to know. To be, they have never had the experience of knowing things to come. They have never had that kind of experience before. They've never, never had that kind of experience before of knowing things to come. Now, Jesus here, he's telling them, only the spirit of truth can make you know about the future. Only the spirit of truth can make you know about the future. I, I like this one. Now, what many Christians think the spirit of truth is, what many will think the spirit of truth is, is the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is not the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit himself is not at all the spirit of truth. <laughs> but there is a spirit called the spirit of truth. Now, if Jesus here was referring to the Holy Spirit, he will mention him. He will say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not called the spirit of truth. Please listen carefully because <clears throat> sometimes we think that the Holy Spirit should do everything in our lives. The Holy Spirit, say, say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the head of all spirits. The head of all spirits. Right? 
So there are spirits under him. And he is their boss. So why should the Holy Spirit do what he created spirits to do? There is a spirit called the spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost is not the spirit of truth. And because many preachers have wrongly taught that this spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit, is the reason why people think the Holy Spirit is under Jesus. So, it is because of that wrong teachings in the past, many think Jesus is higher than the Holy Spirit. Many even think Jesus sends the Holy Spirit. He can send the Holy Spirit on errands. The Holy Spirit. Jesus is an instrument in his hand. How can an instrument send the one who is using it? When, when you read in Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 that Mary was found with the child of the Holy Ghost, the word child there in the Greek is the word N, E-N in the Greek. And N means instrument. So when he says Jesus is the child of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is not a biological child of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the word child is the Greek word N, which means instrument. Your car is an instrument of transportation. Your car is your N, E-N, for transportation. Your cutlery is an N for eating. Instrument. It's the same word, E-N, is the same word as I-N, in. I-N. When you say in the name of Jesus, the Greek word is N, E-N. Not dear, D-I-A. D-I-A means through the name of Jesus. Earlier on in the morning, we said there's a big difference between through Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. When you say we pray through Jesus Christ, you are using the Greek word dia, dia, a. Dia means medium. But Jesus did not say use dia. Jesus said, when you ask in my name, not through my name. In, in is the Greek word n, which means instrument. But through mean is the Greek word dia, dia, a. You see the difference? Now, Jesus is an n, e, n instrument in the hands of the Holy Spirit. So, when Jesus was talking to the disciples here, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will not speak of himself, but whatever he will hear, he will speak. He seemed to suggest that this Spirit of truth listens to the speaker here, Jesus. And he is coming to tell the people the truth. Now, if this is true, and Jesus is an instrument in the hands of the Holy Ghost. Then that means Jesus is not talking about the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus could never have been able to do what he did without the Holy Ghost. So there is there is there is a spirit called the spirit of truth. Why? What does he come to do? He came to guide you into he came to put you on the path of truth because many have been living a lie we're not saying many have been told a lie many are living a lie and they don't know because until you encounter the spirit of truth you will live a false life and you will think it's real Ask the superstars. That's why they still kill themselves at the end of the day. Because they finally discover this is not it. With the fame and money. To hear that prince took his own life, yet in his house, in the safe in the house, the safe in the house, he had $300 million in it. In the safe in the house. Not the one in the bank. The safe in the house. He had 300 million dollars yet he died with 300 million dollars in the house in the safe
not what he has in, even in the bank not even his net worth that's even an old somebody who reigned in the 80s still has about 300 million has pocket money house money Michael Jackson had 50 million dollars in the house 50 so here if you ask these people when they tell you this thing is nothing you don't believe them you think they are lying to you Jesus here says auntie please can we can we minimize that until the spirit of truth comes into your life and set you on the path of truth you will never live a true life so when you ask why do i always meet the wrong people it is simply because you are not acquainted with the spirit of truth why do I meet men of God, ministers who tell me what is not? It's simple because you yourself, you are not acquainted with the spirit of truth. The disciples never knew that there is such a spirit called the spirit of truth. Now, we want people to tell us the truth. No one can tell you the truth. Why? Because no one owes you the truth. Why? Because no one owns the truth. Only spirits can tell the truth. And truth is in the hands of a spirit called the spirit of truth. The truth you need about your life. The truth you need concerning your marital life, concerning your financial life, concerning your academic life, concerning even the destiny of your children is in the hands of the spirit of truth. Everyone, every Christian has been assigned the spirit of truth. But since you don't know about him, he will never manifest. And many have lived and died without ever knowing about the spirit of truth. They even mistake the spirit of truth for the Holy Ghost. It will be an insult for the Holy Ghost to be the spirit of truth. So what did the Holy Ghost really come to do in your life? Look at look at go to chapter fourteen. No, John chapter 14. <coughs> Sorry, John chapter 14, right? Yes, sir. Okay. John 14. Yes, sir. Now, look at verse 26. If I look from verse 25, he said, These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Alright? Yes, sir. But what? Helper. Comforter. But the comforter. Which Holy is the Spirit, Holy Spirit, the Father whom the Father will send in my name, he will, he will teach, teach you all things, all things and, and bring to your remembrance whatsoever. Now, now you. did you notice? If Jesus could call the Holy Spirit, how come if he was talking about the Holy Spirit in chapter 16, verses 30, how come he couldn't mention the Holy Spirit? No. We're trying to show you here in chapter 14 he has already talked about what the holy spirit will come to do in your life the holy spirit came to teach you but there's a spirit of truth that will guide you but we think the holy spirit will come to teach you and also guide you the teaching does not bring you guidance the teachings brings you awareness yeah when you have knowledge you become aware but it doesn't mean you still cannot be deceived. For instance, Adam knew. You know, people say the serpent deceived Adam and Eve. The serpent did not deceive Adam and Eve. The, Bible, the serpent only deceived Eve, not Adam. First Timothy chapter two verses thirteen to fourteen. First Timothy chapter two verses thirteen to fourteen says only Adam, only Eve was deceived. Adam wasn't. So Adam had knowledge, but how come he was a victim? Who? Because there was no guidance. He had knowledge that he shouldn't eat it, but there was no guidance. Guidance would mean God said you listen to your wife. You listen to her. 
shouldn't the man listen to his wife god says but you have knowledge not to listen what's the point listening to you when i know that i know more than you i know what is right and you're telling me let's do what is wrong and you expect me to listen to you you see that it, if i listen to you when i know what is right it means what i lack guidance that's what it means it doesn't mean i don't have knowledge mm. don't you know that there's a police on the road that will give you ticket why do you still speed up oh, yeah. guidance he says the holy spirit came to teach you came to teach you came to teach you so how does the holy spirit teach through his teachers that he has anointed to teach you yeah and there are some people who may not have the teachings there are some people who may not have the teachings but they have the guidance there's a prophet they always seek his counsel this business what do you think i should do they say do it this way yet those people may not come to church may not know jack about the word of god but they know a man of god to call concerning a major decision they want to take so you have one who has the teaching and may not have the guidance you have one who has the guidance but does not have the teaching and those who have the guidance they seem to succeed more than those who have the teaching but now we're trying to show you how you can have both yeah. well maybe you don't want it with that yeah. well you can have both yes, sir, the guidance it. the teachings and the guidance jesus here didn't say the holy spirit came to guide you the holy ghost ends with what teaching he came to teach you and to bring to your remembrance knowing that you can forget <coughs> so one thing the holy ghost came to deal with in your life is what forgetfulness he came to fight forgetfulness do you know why the children of israel fell before god because they always forgot and the lord said do not forget do not forget that I'm the who gave the power to gather with. Don't forget. He said, when you are eating and are full, remember me. That means they could forget. If I God had to tell them, put me in remembrance, that means they could forget the existence of God who blessed them. Now, he says, the Holy Ghost came to always make you remember. What? Remember who? Your friend? No. To remember what you have already been taught. So how do you know you have the Holy Ghost? When well, you are able to even remember what you have been taught. Because you can forget. So the Holy Ghost came to remind you what you have forgotten. Not to speak in tongues. Jesus said the Holy Ghost came to teach you and to bring you into remembrance what you have already been taught that you forgot. Good. But then the Holy Ghost did not come to guide you. Didn't come to guide you. Okay. Let's look at why you need guidance from the Spirit of Truth. And who is this Spirit of Truth? We told you it's not the Holy Ghost. But let's show you why He is vital in our lives. Because you can be anointed and make mistakes. For instance, let us give you an example. Go to John chapter 1. <coughs> we read it earlier on today. It's about John the Baptist. John chapter 1, yeah. John chapter 1, right? Can you read verse 6? From God. No, no, no. There, your version is not. Your version is not a Christian. There was a man sent from God. We know the word being sent there means commission and ordained. And, and, uh, uh, is it amplified? Have we? 
there are some uh, there are some things amplified does not amplify mm. <laughs> or over amplified yes sir this is let's just talk to us in simple language he said there was a oh, man yes, sent yes. from god his <laughs> name was, was john. john now who is god jesus said god is spirit amen now amen. Please answer me now. Amen. 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 he said there was a man sent from, from god, god whose name was, was john who is God who sent him? Spirit. spirit. God is spirit. Please, is that true? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Now, there's a reason why we told you to mark that. Go to verse 29. The next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and see it. Behold, the lamp, the lamp of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Earlier on today, we told you Jesus is not a lamp, Jesus is a bull. Bull, right? Yes, sir. We took you to Exodus. To, no, wait first. Now, Exodus twenty-one, verses twenty-eight to thirty. Yes, sir. We told you about the thirty pieces of silver. It is the price of a bull. Why the thirty pieces of silver was given to Judas Iscariot? Then we took you to Leviticus chapter four. That the bull is the atonement of the sin for the priest anointed priest right and then the bull is also the at the price for the nation, for the nation. right and we said there is no place in leviticus chapter 4 that a lamp is offered for the atonement of sin rather is good a he good for the ruler of the jews and what is she good for the common jew Except you want to say Jesus is an hermaphrodite. And he's not. And he's not. An hermaphrodite will mean both male and female. But Jesus is not. So Jesus could Jesus was not even a lamb. A lamb is not what is used for the atonement of sin. So Jesus was a bull. Okay. Now John the Baptist, he said it here. John the Baptist began this whole thing about lamb. That Jesus is the lamp of God. Please take it away the sins of the world. Now, look at verses 30. This is he whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me, and I knew him not. But he, but that he should be revealed. I said, but I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. John bear record saying i saw what the, the spirit the spirit descending from heaven, from heaven like, like a dove pause, pause, pause. the spirit descended from heaven like, like a dove question who was that spirit now we said now Okay. Please give. Don't be distracted. You see, it's good to make side comments, but sometimes it can be excess. Give us your attention. We are the ones teaching you what you don't know. We are not saying you don't know Bible. We want to teach you truth. Yes, sir. No. He said, "I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode." on him now do you know this is not the first time spirits descend angels are spirits jacob had a dream he saw angels ascending and descending uh, king nebuchadnezzar saw the spirit fall on him and he ran mad for seven years the spirit of the spirit that fell on him made him move run mad. Okay, now I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode on him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me. Now who sent John the Baptist? Come on now. Who sent him? You see, you are not responding well. 
We read John chapter 1 verse 6. There was a man sent from God. His name was what? John. John. Is that true? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, now John said, He that sent me. Who is the he that sent him? Uh, God. God. Right? Yes, sir. He that sent me spoke to me. So if he that sent John spoke to John, how can it be the same person to fall on Jesus? He that sent me did what? Said to me, upon whom I see who? The spirit. The spirit. Question, what kind of spirit? The spirit descending and remain on, on, on him. The same is uh, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if he does baptize with the Holy Spirit, it looks like he already has the Holy Spirit. But did he? Certainly not. Because the person who had the Holy Ghost at this time was John the Baptist. The Bible says he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Jesus was here to receive it. So the question is, if John had the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb, Angel Gabriel said to Zachariah, his father, he said, this child shall be filled. Luke chapter 1 verses 15 to 17. He shall be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. So as at the time John the Baptist was talking, he had the Holy Spirit. So the question is, who was talking to John? God. And God is Spirit. And God is Holy. So God is Holy Spirit in John, talking to John. Then the question is, which spirit descended on Jesus? Because the spirit that descended of Jesus led him to the wilderness. So it was the spirit of truth that rested on Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth led Jesus. Now, Jesus was about to depart. He said, now, when I go, the spirit of truth will come. He will guide you like he guided me. How did Jesus know that for someone to receive his sight, he needed to spit on the ground. And frankly, the spirit of truth told him, the truth about these eyes, for these eyes to be free, you need to spit on the ground. Uh, oh -oh. So Jesus didn't just do what he did. So when he said, my father, the, my father, I do what I see my father do. The person he was calling his father was the spirit of truth. <laughs> so here, you are looking at an operation of the Holy Spirit. You are looking at an operation that the one who leads you, who guides you, who tells you do this business, don't do this business, is the spirit of truth. That one has the spirit of truth to guide you. You tell you the truth. This is one thing people don't understand about spiritual fatherhood. They think it's just to sow seeds and register to a network of spiritual sons to a man of God. A man of God that has never spoken to you one day. A, a man of God. He says he will guide you into all truth. A man of God you hardly see or talk to. But there's one that will guide you for how long he didn't specify that means all your life as long as you live he will guide you into all truth then he will not speak of himself that means he will not use it. he will not tell you things based on his emotions or sentiments he will tell you what is needed is that not what 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 happened to paul yes, sir. when paul was converted on his way to damascus he asked the lord what would you have me do Acts chapter 9 verse 6. Jesus said, go into Damascus. It shall be told you what you must do. So Ananias became what? The spirit of truth in the life of Paul. Hey! And told him, you have been raised to be an apostle. Hey! A messenger to the Gentiles to speak to kings. And to bear the name. And to suffer for the name's sake. Spirit of truth. But Ananias' personal opinion of Paul was not a good one. Yeah. He said, I've heard reports about you, but the Bible says he will not speak of himself, but he will speak what he hears. So he spoke to Paul what he heard Jesus tell him. Oh. 
you want to know whether you are in the right church you want to know whether you are, the, you are with the right pastor well, he, you see sometimes you know Christians are very loyal then we appreciate their loyalty really a lot of Christians are very loyal and a lot of Christians are loyal to their pastor which is very very good but question is since you've been since you've been following this pastor what are the victories of guidance that's the truth this one is not oh you know i don't want to offend anybody my pastor keeps calling me no where are the victories of the guidance really only you can tell not me you know so say, all these people <laughs> the victories of the guidance where are the victories you know we need to be careful these days all these men of God some of them are instruments of Satan I agree so you have to stay with me and, and so that you, you are not you, you don't cross path with wrong prophets but pastor, since I've been with you, where are the victories, really? I, I agree with what you said, pastor. But I want to ask you a simple question. Where are the victories? This is an amazing. Jesus, in three years of ministry, only focused on 12 men. He was not interested in the crowd. For, hey, Jesus, as far as he was concerned, if I can build a future, if I can adjust the destinies of 12 men, that's all. Whether the crowd come, it doesn't matter. And Jesus, do you know Jesus did not succeed in building the destinies of 12 men? He only succeeded in building the destinies of two out of the 12, Peter and John. That's all. That's all. And those ones today shook the whole world. Then later on, found Paul. Found Paul. So you see here Jesus is telling us something. See, we the church is a place where we gather and assembly. Although the church is the body of Christ, but we know we have a place where we gather, like this place now we hear the word of God, we teach you. But Jesus is saying here, it will go beyond meeting in a place to, to hear the word of God. Jesus is saying, let's move out of the church walls and then carry your pastor along in your personal life that's what he said to guide you into all truth he will not express personal opinion people come to meet us so i tell them which one do you want to hear god's will or my own opinion my own personal opinion i may not like you but god's will do this everything will be fine sometimes some people some people come to, when we pay for them they say we want to sow this i say keep your money when you have your testimony you can sow your seed but personally, I, I want to collect the money. But but I know if I collect the money, you think you bought the prayer. So keep your money. Yes. Let's tell you the truth. Keep your money. When you have a testimony, then you can give you. And some don't remember to give. They even forget. I say, it's good. At least you can't say you did me a favor. <coughs> so here he's saying, take... I will say, listen, we are not talking about a situation where, fine, since you said uh, I'll be disturbing you every day, disturb me every day. Don't call me on the phone and talk to me about nonsense. It is an notice the focus is on guidance. Not just to ask me how are you? Are you okay? Have you eaten? That should not be your business. What do you need guidance for? Jesus is saying here. Because it's not everything we pray about. Yeah. We want to pray about everything when you need the spirit of truth to give you guidance. But you see, the trouble we have is that we think we know more than the one who can tell you the truth. So because I did not do nothing, you think I don't understand the nursing profession. But there is a truth about nursing. Even though you studied it, there's a truth we know that you don't know. There's a truth that we can tell you that there's a spirit that wants to make that building collapse. There's a spirit that wants to make you f to be fired. There's a truth we can tell you. And this is how to escape it. No, 
is the Holy Spirit. You say it's the Holy. I, I have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is my advantage. It's true. The Holy Ghost is an advantage when it comes to knowledge. But when it comes to guidance, it is not. We know politicians who meet us, who come to meet us in New Jersey. They don't come to church. Some of them say, please, I hope you are not angry that we don't really come to church. I said, no, I don't have a problem with that. So, but you know, we all know you. We know politicians who come to meet us for prayers. I will tell them this. Some will talk on the phone. I will talk on the phone. Sometimes they say, please, can we meet you somewhere? And I say, okay, don't worry, I'll find time. They say, are you coming alone? Sometimes, uh, are you coming alone? I say, no, you know somebody drives me. So, that's true. Okay, hey, how do you do that? We'll talk on the phone. We'll talk on the phone. We'll relate with them. How much do you need? Those I say, don't worry, I'm fine. When I need something, I'll let you know. But they receive guidance. They don't come to church. They don't come to church. Sometimes, I folks, some, when they drive, I say, wait, I'm coming. I keep them in the capacity of just to go and attend to something. But you see, these people, they are conscious. How come these people of the world, they seem to know where to seek guidance? We Christians, we say we don't want our pastor in our business. As though you have a business, really. Yeah? Does it make sense to you? <laughs> My, uh, too much. Yeah, the spirit of truth. He said he will not speak of himself. So that means the spirit of truth, if, he's, if the word spirit here was really referring to an invisible spirit, how come you've not heard him in 37 years you've been alive? For 37 years, you've never heard the spirit tell you the truth? It means that the spirit was always talking. You couldn't recognize who he was. You think everyone is like you. Isn't it amazing? Samson's mother, when the angel of the Lord came, what did she say to her husband? She said, a man of God came. Even though he looks like an angel, but a man of God came. Has she ever seen an angel? No. But she was saying that he he's nicely dressed. That's what she was trying to say. She said his countenance is like an angel. That means he's neat. I've never seen a man that clean. That's what she was trying to say. But when an offering was given, that's when they saw that this is really an angel of the Lord. When he entered the smoke and climbed it to heaven. <laughs> and, uh, and the man said, I've seen God. Now I'm going to die. Then the wife said, if he's God, then that's his business. Why, would, why did he let us see him? <laughs> because she knew she married a fool. You know, I mean, the angel was comfortable talking to a drunk. She was always the one drinking. He was always the one praying. Wow. But the angel preferred to talk to her because of her boldness. She was never afraid. Zachariah was afraid when he saw an angel. The same angel, the word man of God means Gabriel. It was the angel Gabriel that came to Samson's mother. She was not afraid. But Zachariah, a priest who was praying, was afraid. Okay. So, here, Jesus, the Bible says he was led into the wilderness. The Spirit, the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Now, Jesus said, anyone who denies me before men, I will deny him before my Father and his holy angels. So, every angel of God is holy. Say it. Every angel of God is holy. Please say it. Now, say it. Every angel of God is holy. Now, Psalm 104 verses 4 says, Angels are what? Spirits. So, angels are what? Holy spirits. Because angels are spirits and they are holy, Jesus said. So, we agree. Angels are holy spirits. But there is one that is holy spirit himself. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And you need to know the difference here. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> the reason why we're telling you this is that the way the the spirit and John the Baptist did not tell us it was the Holy Spirit because John the Baptist was still with the Holy Spirit when he was talking here. And the Bible never said the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in John the Baptist left John the Baptist and entered Jesus. But the Bible did say the Spirit 
upon King Saul, left King Saul and rested on King David. So there's no record that the Holy Spirit ever left John the Baptist even when he was alive. So, so did Jesus ever later have the Holy Spirit? He did. When? After John the Baptist died. But as long as John the Baptist was still alive, he still had the Holy Spirit. He had already had it for 30 years. Jesus was just starting. So it was the spirit of truth that rested on Jesus. That's why Jesus could know things. He could know the truth of matters. He could know the heart of men. Because the spirit of truth was guiding him. When they set the trap for him, Jesus knew how to escape. He knew how to disguise because of the spirit of truth. It doesn't mean he was a coward. But the spirit of truth will say, no, you can't win now. Now, run away. Disguise yourself. The spirit of truth. No, sometimes, you know, Christians, the most stupid remark Christians make is, I, I, I like to see my mind. I, I, I like to just see it. I like to speak my mind. I don't care. You know me. You don't know. You are a fool. Even Jesus didn't behave that way. He just shows you lack the spirit of truth. Where well, the Holy Spirit is my, he, he will guide me. The Holy Spirit has never guided anyone. Because many even died with the Holy Spirit. It is the spirit of truth that guides you. And tells you, this is it. Take this step. Take this step. So this one, we're not talking about internet fatherhood. Because the person Jesus was calling my father, that I see you, I do what I see my father do, is the spirit of truth. Now he's saying, I'm going to leave. He will be with you guys. Knowing that you people have been with me. He has become acquainted with you people. So question, how did Peter know Ananias, Ananias told him a lie? The spirit of truth was now with him. To guide Peter to know what Ananias is telling you is not accurate. You know, over time, some years ago, the Lord spoke to me. He said, I would like to give you a counsel. And I said, what is a counsel? He said, when people are telling you the stories about their life, about what is happening to them, listen to me more. I know the story more than they. They may be lying to you. Wow. So sometimes you may be telling me a story. It may look like I'm not paying attention. I'm, really, I'm not listening to you. I'm listening to what the Lord has to tell me. And if the Lord is not talking, while you are still narrating the story, I can begin to listen to you. Sometimes I'm saying, come again, come again. It is simply because the Lord has not interjected. Then I say, come again, narrate the story again. Because really, when you started, I was not listening to you at all. I was waiting to hear what he has to say. Because you can lie to me in the story. So it is when I know he has not said anything, I say, hey, come again, you say what again, you say what again. Hey, I said this and that. Then I will not begin to listen to you, knowing that the Lord has not said anything yet. Then in the course of saying something, you now say something, and the Lord says, mm -mm. then I'll know, no, this story is not correct. <coughs> and because before initially I used to tell people, no, no, that thing is not right, what you said is not true. And the thing used to cause quarrel. So sometimes I'll just listen. <laughs> and you think I heard. Maybe I didn't pay attention because I know you already like. Then I say, let's pray, let the will of the Lord be done, you know. Over time we've learned because it used to cause quarrel. It used to cause quarrel. Yeah. Look at Princess here. Some six years ago, we came to our mother's store. Business mother, big time business woman. The store laces, jewelries, big time. On Liberty Avenue, right? Eh? In Brooklyn. Big time business. Jewelry. <laughs> oh man. We came as a mother. We told her things as princess. Her mother calls me. Eh? <laughs> he said, How old are you? I tell you, she's there now. Nah. And she, she fought her mother for us so many times. <laughs> the mother later apologized to us this year. After five years, the mother said, I want to tell you that you are a real man of God. I've been looking for an opportunity to apologize to you. After five years. We told her, we said, Madam, we see fire. We see fire in this business. Go and pay tight. Tight of $200. I didn't tell her, give it to me. Go to your church. She said, how old are you? I told her my age. She said, 
So before you were born, she said, I'm old enough to be your mother. I said, yes, ma. She said, before you were born, people have been prophesying to me. You, you always see bad, bad things for me. She told me, don't ever talk to my children again. Cut you off. Please, I was not begging me. No, brother, said, don't mind her. At the end of the day, we were in Poconos. What we told her, when did it happen? A year after. That means you, eh? Okay, it happened that same year. Okay, but there was a time difference. Almost a year because we were in Poconos. So, what he didn't know is that we were seeing ahead. He said, the spirit will show you things to come. The spirit of truth was telling us things to come. We were in Poconos. And the amazing thing is that the reason for the fire was unnecessary. And it so happened that nobody was in the shop. It was in the night. And it was only her shop that burnt down. Meanwhile, other shops were there. It was just only her shop that burnt down. He everything. Come and see. That store. Oh. The glasses. The way the mother. Man. A oh, big store. The way she put the mirrors. Oh, man. Everything burnt to ashes. It's the spirit of truth. You need guidance. That's the trouble people have. But my mother told me this is not about mother thing. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for your father. Jesus said there is a spirit of truth. He will guide you. Like we said, most of the things we pray for are things you never should have prayed about. See, sometimes we try to act like we know. Even your boss at all, when he tells you what is wrong, you don't argue. So how about a minister who tells you the truth? You like to argue. Yet you can't argue with your boss who tells you what is wrong. The same boss who told you do it this way before you hire boss will say, no, I don't, I don't know why she did it that way. Anyway, John said, he said, and I saw and I bore record that this is the son of God. So when he called Jesus a lamb, it was an error. But when the spirit in him told him that he is not a lamb, he is the son of God, he not declared, the spirit told me he is the son of God. And many are still going by the error John the Baptist made by not listening to the spirit. The spirit of truth is what you need for your business. The spirit of truth Amen. is what you need for your business. One day we were praying for a lady in the hotel room here in Atlanta. Pray for one lady in the hotel room and we were dealing with a demon. And we said, why did you use palm oil? Palm oil, red oil. For this, the demon screamed. How did you know it was palm oil they used? Ah, nobody. Ah. Then the demon said, who are you again? I said, why are you asking me? He said, that you could know it was palm oil that was used for this ritual. The spirit of truth was standing there to tell us that it was this thing that was used for the rituals. That's what you need. Pray. Even demons can wake you up and tell you to pray. It's time to pray. Even demons can wake you up and say, sister, it's time to pray. <laughs> Jesus said, the spirit of truth. Now, let's let you know We'll close with this, but we're introducing this to you. I, I need the spirit of truth to reveal the truth to me concerning this matter. If it is concerning your marital life, so why am I like this? I need the spirit of truth to speak to me. Lord, even as I go for service, let the spirit of truth speak to me. Concerning my financial life, let the spirit of truth speak to me. Why am I like this? Why am I not moving forward? Let the spirit of truth speak to me in the service. That's how you prepare yourself for services. Or when you are going to see a man of God. Say, so, yeah, I want the spirit of truth to speak to me concerning this thing. Why am I stagnant in my life? I want the spirit of truth to, to speak to me. Didn't you notice? Each time people want to inquire of God, they will go and meet Samuel the seer. Samuel the seer was the spirit of truth on behalf of God. And anything he told them was it. Yes, someone will not even, someone to see, he will not ask God, Lord, what do you say? He will just say anything. And anything he said, God approved. 
a man without error in his mouth. You see why the Bible says there was no guile in Jesus' mouth. Why the spirit of truth was guiding him. You know one time, a prophet of God, by the name of Major Prophet Robert Inger, he said, he said, I don't make mistakes. And of course a lot of people criticized him. Criticized him. They put it on the papers in Zimbabwe. He was screaming. How can he say a prophet doesn't? He said because he now later explained. He said there's an angel standing beside me. So when I'm calling your phone number, he's calling me. That's why I call it in a hurry. When the angel is saying 725-344, he said I'm saying it because he is the one telling me to say. That's why I don't make mistakes. So for him to say he doesn't make mistakes, what the person that is standing next to him is the spirit of truth. That's what makes a prophet who he is. One time we had a financial challenge and our papa was in the country then. He called us on. He said, I want to see you. When I came, he said, an angel came to me last evening. He told me to give you money. And he said, wait. He went upstairs and went to bring me cash. Our papa, Papa Joshua Aguila, he said, take. The angel of the Lord visited me last night. He told me to give you money. That's what you need in your life. The spirit of truth. How long will you keep pretending as, as though everything is fine with you? So you say, man, you speak the Christian language. Jesus said, that's not what you need. You need the spirit of truth. That's the person Jesus was calling his father. For instance, how did he know that there's a fish with money to pay his tax? Meanwhile, Judas Carol was there holding the cash the money cash. How did he know that he didn't need to take money from the offering box to pay his tax? There's a fish with money. The spirit of truth told him. How did Jesus know what to say to the devil when he tempted him? The spirit of truth was talking to me. For talking to him, it has been written. The book Jesus read the most was the book of Isaiah. The scriptures Jesus quoted to the devil were not written by Isaiah. So how did he know? The Bible said it was Jesus' custom to read the writings of Isaiah. Yet what he was quoting to the devil was not the writings of Isaiah. How did he know? The spirit of truth told him. Wow. For instance, Go to Acts chapter And you know guidance can come in different ways Guidance can come There's a way you can see something happen You just know something is wrong ahead Something is going to go wrong ahead Something is going to go wrong For instance, last week we, we, we were by our terminal We came early We were seeing people board the plane yeah, they told me I was late. I said, I've been here. And I was seeing them. I knew something was going to go wrong. I had to sleep. Ah. Of course, then Brother Mega came to pick us up and I said I was not going. And I had to stay in the airport. I was asking, why? How come? Before me, I missed my flight. I said, never. Something is wrong. And I was praying. I said, Lord, talk to me. Man, I didn't sleep. Although after a while, I just left. I said, man, no, 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 no. Something is wrong. So I know by the time we got to New Jersey, the police stopped us and took our car. Then I knew, oh, this was it. This was it. It was in the area of transportation. This attack came. Finally, we got the car, did what was right, and everything is fine. I said, oh, see, guidance. See, man, what was the truth? And I recall when the police was taking our car, he, he, Pasini was there I, begging the police. I told Pasini, don't beg, we were wrong. We needed to do what was right. Yeah. Guardians. Now we've done what is right. Which police can stop us again? No Do what is right. And that's the truth. How long will you keep dodging? How long will you keep dodging? And you think you are smart. No, you are not smart at all. There's a day of reckoning. But let the spirit of truth guide you. Let him guide you. 
Peter was fishing fish until Jesus came as the spirit of truth in Peter's life and said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Paul said to Timothy, follow me. And what you have seen in me, what you have learned of me, do. That's how guidance comes. He said he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Now, the Holy Ghost he does not run an errand for Jesus. He said, whatever you shall hear, he will speak. For instance, let's show you an example. The second example, let's close with this. All right? Let's show you where... Hmm, Okay. Go to Acts chapter 16. Let's close with that. Alright? So that everybody can go. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for your patience. We may need to value this. But even as I go to work this week, let the spirit of truth guide me in what I do at work. Let the spirit of I'm tired of making errors. I don't want to make mistakes. Let the spirit of truth guide me in knowing the right customer to talk to, in knowing what the right words to speak that will bring favor to this business. Yes, sir. That's what we need. All you really need is the consciousness that there is a spirit of truth. The mercy does not live in Atlanta, but the Holy Ghost can bring you, bring to your remembrance what we have taught you. Then the spirit of truth can guide you. See, after you have been taught, the spirit of truth does what? Guides you. Look at, look at verses 6. Now, when they have gone through Phrygia, and the region of Galatia. Acts 16. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, man. We're already in New Jersey. <laughs> you know, we're already in New Jersey. Okay, we're back to Atlanta. Okay. Now, Acts 16, verse 6. Now, when they have gone to Phrygia and the region of what? Galatia. They were forbidding of the Holy Ghost to speak, to preach the word in 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 what Asia. Question: Does the Holy Ghost forbid people from going to a place? No, the Holy Ghost only came to do what teach you and bring to your remembrance. So certainly, the person called here Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth he is a holy spirit like we told you angels are holy and they are spirits this is an operation now you get to find out earlier on in chapter 15 of the book of acts the apostles in jerusalem sent two prophets to follow paul one was barnabas after the previous barnabas left and then the other was silas and at this time, Silas was a poor. And the Bible says Silas was a prophet. And if you look at Acts chapter 21, when Paul visited the house of Philip the Evangelist, Agabus stood up and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? And Agabus was a prophet. So here, the person speaking to forbid them from entering Asia was Silas the prophet. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, someday you get it. Alright. Look at verse 7. After they, are, they were come to Marcia, they are said to go into Britannia. Read. But the Spirit, now notice, the Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. So that means it's the same Spirit. The Spirit of truth. Through the prophet spoke. Told them, don't do it until what? So they passed through Marcia, came down to Troas, and Paul now had a vision in the night. Paul now had a vision that, look, yeah, that they should go to Macedonia. You see that? Yeah. But the spirit, so the spirit of truth was trying to give them guidance. Now, what, what are we trying to say? 
here see how the spirit of truth guided them the holy ghost does not guide you the holy ghost only does what teach you and bring to your remembrance that's not guidance at all you see why in romans chapter 8 i think verses 14 when paul said those who are led of the spirit they are the sons of god which spirit the spirit of truth not holy spirit he says that when you are led of the spirit you become what the, the son of god the matured ones yeah. you see why jesus had to tell peter when you were young you did what you like now that you are old you need and you need to stretch your hand and another will lead you yeah. even to the place you do not wish to go they wanted to go to Masha. the holy ghost said no macedonia. go to macedonia yeah. you see why you may be interested in callings he is the love of your life he is all you want but the spirit of truth says Collins will abandon you 15 years from now Collins will walk away from you three months from now marry marcus i don't like marcus marcus has a big head but you see marcus will stay with you till the end marcus will stay with you but, but what will my friends think this is not about what your friends think this is about the spirit of truth guiding you that's what you need so we need to have that till when next we meet again they will tell you more about this spirit of truth because you need it first of all the bible says true knowledge shall the just be delivered so now do you know there's already a deliverance now knowing that there is a spirit called what? the spirit of truth as i go to work father by your mercy let the spirit of truth guide me today this week let it be victorious as i'm going to read for my exam let the spirit of truth guide me in showing me the area that i need to read to pass this exam ah as the spirit of as i go to work today or as i go out today let the spirit of truth guide me to avoid accidents to not be a victim of an accident as i travel to africa or as i go on holiday to hawaii let the spirit of truth guide me show me the right hotel one time oh man we call we lost in a hotel oh, oh here in atlanta right yeah it was a hotel in atlanta yeah pastor Buki, oh, no pastor Buki is our administrator so she does our hotel bookings and all that but it's amazing we got to this hotel he's in lawrenceville yeah but it was doing that no cross program yeah man when we got to that hotel yeah, she came to our hotel too. Well, the moment we got to that hotel, Pastor Buki said, We are here, sir. I said, Is this where you brought us? She said, Yeah. I said, Man, something is wrong here. <laughs> but we kept quiet. <laughs> well, we checked into our room, our folks were jumping, jubilating. You know, when you pretend to be joyful, but you know something is wrong. <laughs> Tried to sleep that night. Couldn't sleep. Come and see witches. I said, all of you, what are you doing here? He said, you tell me, we own this hotel. What are you doing here? Mm. So I woke up and said, that night, man, it was, it was challenging. The others were sleeping, snoring, throwing their legs. <laughs> By the time I woke up, we came to Pastor Wookie and said, Pastor Wookie, man, this is not it. Sure enough, Pastor Wookie went down the next morning as she was talking to one of the staffs. One of the stars, as she was preaching to one of the stars, one of the stars said, Do you people lodge here? And began to tell us a book of the things that happened in that hotel. Wow. She said, Man. See that? But you see, it's not as if we blame her. For yeah. the, after we prayed, the Lord did say, Fine, you can stay in the hotel. <laughs> you can stay in the hotel. That was where we stayed for the no cost program. Yeah? Is that not? The same, well, that was where we all stayed in the hotel. Because our folks were coming to lodge in that hotel, people from all over the world, so we had to pray. See, so that they don't come, they are coming for deliverance now. Demons will, will, will increase the bondage. <laughs> so, I guess that was why the Lord even permitted us to sleep there and know what to confront. Because a lot of people had booked several, several rooms in that hotel that period. They had to pray. See, you need the spirit of truth. He is called the spirit. Say it. Say I have the spirit of truth in my life. Say it like you mean it. I have the spirit of truth. Why should a demon be the one telling you the truth? You have to be seeking advice from a demon. 
Demons tell truth. Yes. Demons don't lie. No demon has ever lied in the Bible. No demon. Demons tell the truth. But why do you still need to seek advice from a demon? See, but also pray for this demon. Pray for this person. Let the demon speak and show us things. When the spirit of truth is present, you have to rely on a demon or on a voodoo priest to tell you the truth. And we're not saying they lie. Or a palm reader tells a palm reader's lie. No, some of them do tell the truth, really. The spirit of divination can make people know the truth. But why should people trust the spirit of divination more? When they can come to you, you that is clean. All the palm reading houses will close down in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah because the spirit of truth has come to take preeminence. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, as we were coming out, we went to pray for someone. The demon was saying, but that's why did you come to Georgia? Please leave Georgia alone. I don't know why they sent you. Why did you come to Georgia? Again. In the place where we went to pray for someone. Just now before this service. Why did you come to Georgia again? Oh, they should tell you to oh why did you come? But also go leave Georgia for us. Everything was fine. No, we were enjoying ourselves. Is that not what the demon? We were enjoying ourselves. Oh, you just came and scattered everything for us. <laughs> but we're here in uh, what's this place? Riverside. We're just only in a city in the state of Georgia. He, no, he, the demon said you have scattered everything in the whole of Georgia. Your presence here has scattered everything for us. Yeah, the spirit of truth has come in Christ. Amen. 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 He says he will show you things to come. Amen. So he can show them to you in your sleep. Amen. He can show it to you through the messages. Amen. He can show it to you through, through things. Like we said, we miss our flight. So we knew Amen. something was wrong. Something was wrong. Amen. See, guidance. So there are certain rejections that you should not pray for acceptance for. There are certain rejections that are guidance. Yes. So instead of crying, I don't know why I didn't get this job. What if the spirit of truth was trying to lead you to something better? Mm. Right. Yeah. The spirit of truth was trying to lead you to something better. Yeah. Guidance. They said they couldn't admit your child in this school. So I said, but I want my child to really go to, to this school. Meanwhile, God is saying, the witches that are here, go to this one. So how can my child go to this other school? Are you, are you high? He said, you don't believe that God does care for you. If God does care, and you know he does, why shouldn't you be grateful? Say, Lord, I thank you. I know you, you have a great, glorious plan in this. James said, if you lack wisdom, ask God. So, Lord, what's the wisdom concerning this matter? Hmm. When we first came to America, when we opened the bank account for the ministry, I, I didn't know why the Holy Spirit was telling me, go to, uh, well, like we said, now Holy Spirit, now the Spirit of Truth was telling me, go bank with Bank of America. Then we had a treasurer who said, let's do TD Bank. The, the encourage businesses, they do this. I said, no TD Bank. They talk, 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 trying to encourage me for us to do, I said, no, Bank of America. And meanwhile, I had a Chase Bank account. And um, we didn't know. We don't know where we traveled to. We traveled to a place. And uh, I asked, uh, I said, so, so is there ba a Bank of America here? Oh, they say your Bank of America is everywhere. I said, how about TD Bank? I said, no, we don't have TD Bank here. How about Chase Bank? I said, no, we don't have Chase Bank here. Then the Lord said, this is the reason why I say you should do Bank of America. See that? It may look very trivial, but there's a truth in it. Somebody left the house for us to come and take. Nice house in Avington. Gave us a house to come and take. And at the end of the day, we came, we liked the house. A person media took us there. We saw the house, we said we'll take it. We'll make the payment tomorrow. By the time we got to the house, the Lord said, You like the house? I said, yeah. He said, Leave it for somebody else. Uh, do you know to this day, nobody lives there. God said, Who is chasing you from where you are? I said, Nobody. Then the Lord said, Why don't you stay? Where are you running to? 
See, get the spirit to, to get acquainted with it. Now the knowledge has come. Make it your consciousness. The spirit of truth is following me wherever I go. The spirit of truth. As you go home now, ruminate to write. The spirit of truth is with me. I will never make mistakes again. No more errors. They bring you a document to sign. Once there's a resistance, don't sign it. Once you feel a resistance, you know your feelings are not cannot lie. So say, what if your feelings are no? We are fired up. See, when you hear the message, when you hear the word of God, walk the word of God, the first thing it does is that it adjusts your emotions. Because naturally, this is something you would have been excited to sign. Now, to see for the first time, you feel a discomfort in signing document, then it means that something is wrong with the document. Period. Period. Because naturally, you would have signed it. But to see now there's a resistance for the first time, you say, no, no, I won't sign this thing. Something is wrong. Someone say, what is wrong? You say, no, I, I can't place what it is, but I know something is wrong with this thing. And it might just save a 20-year future. Yes, sir. Stand to your feet. Father, uh, make me acquainted with the spirit of truth. This is amazing. You, you, your friend who could not help you in the time of crisis is who you are calling your best friend when there's a spirit of truth who knows who can tell you everything who can tell you even the truth of the person you are calling your best friend yeah can we pray that prayer then with yes, this yes, right yes, sir. father let the spirit of truth father, let the spirit, let the spirit of, truth of truth be my best friend from this day forward. Best friend for the day. Ah, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Father, Jesus. help me see your body. Father, acquaint me, acquaint me with the spirit of truth. May I become acquainted with the spirit of truth. Acquainted with the Holy Ghost. Saka Paradis. Kiki Paradaya. Bali. Soto. Ebe. Lekuska. Razzadaya. Kiosko. Kiosko. Kori. Kiosko. 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 Spirit of truth. Acquaint me with the spirit of truth. with the spirit of truth. May I become acquainted with the spirit of truth. See, listen. It's a promise Jesus made. It's a promise that the spirit of truth will come. It's a promise of God to every one of his child. Except you think he's lying and he never lied. I know this business will work out because the spirit of truth is here to guide me. I know this ministry will flourish because the spirit of truth is here to guide me. My life is error free. Say, it. Say my life is error free. Say it like you mean it. Error free. Can we sing the song unto the Lord? He has promised He will never fail. Hallelujah. I will follow I will follow him. My God has promised He will never fail.
cancels every doubt in your life. When you find a Christian who is full of doubt, it is because the spirit of truth is not present in their lives. Not because you don't know the word of God, you can know the word of God. Peter, who was full of the word of God, had doubts. But to the spirit of truth, clear this doubt. And the Bible says that spirit that spoke to you was the angel that brought communion. You see, for some, so like our papa now, it's not as if there's a man of God he looks up to that will teach him. So, the angel of the Lord, the spirit of truth, is there as an angel to talk to our papa. But for some of us now, our papa has become our own spirit of truth. You see the point now? Do you understand? That's how it works. It was easy for Peter to relate with angels because Jesus was no longer there. But for others who were under the leadership of Peter, they had to receive their guidance through Peter. That's why Paul, there are men of God who are desiring to see angels who may never see one. Why? Because in their destiny they were supposed to be under a man of God. So which angel are you supposed to see? Until Peter left, John never saw one angel. Meanwhile, Peter was already seeing angels. But the moment Peter died, John's eyes, because there was nobody, there was no Peter to give John guidance. So angels have to now relate with him. Did you understand? Have to relate with John. Yeah, that's how it works. So you see, once you have a leader, don't worry about trying to see angels. As long as you can see them. That's even the angel in your life because God said you receive me to the Galatian church. You say you receive me as an angel. Angels mean angel mean messenger. Yeah. That's what you need. Paul said there stood by me an angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, and he told me I shall be surely brought before Caesar. And I surely believe God that it shall be, even as it was told in his I believe God. Yeah. We knew an angel appeared to him. And what the angel said, Paul said, It is God. I believe God, for it shall be, even as it was told to him. Mary, when the angel visited, the angel gave her. Mary said, well, be wrong to me according to thy word. She didn't say according to the word of God, according to thy word. What you say, what you have. And if you acknowledge it now, the spirit of truth will follow you home and follow you all the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. You know there are some customers that are like rats. The spirit of truth can tell you this one is a rat in each of your business. The spirit of truth can tell you don't buy this dress. If you buy this dress, it will be poor. The place where we went to is about these people buy. Right? So, we saw a jewelry. A jewelry. I mean, that gold is beautiful. That jewelry is very beautiful. It's something you would like to buy. But the people said, we are using this jewelry to destroy the business. The spirit of truth guides that's what you need. That's what you need. Even if you go to a party and they offer you food, you can tell. Ah, this way because if something is in this, you don't eat it. Yes, sir. I don't know who to choose. It is because this way of truth is not present in your life. Now you know. If you have maybe a paper team, people, many people are beating for. How do you know which right person to give it to? Let the spirit of truth. From today, you begin to see his manifestation. In your life, you see his manifestation. Say, I acknowledge it. Say it. I acknowledge it. And it will surely be even as it was told me. It will surely be as it was told to me. Yes, sir. Yes. That's it. Witness to see you, you will see you will have testimony. Amen. The Bible says he said when you are about to take the wrong way, you shall hear a voice say, Stop. This is the way. Walk in. Some of you through this lesson, you've already received guidance already. What you were planning to do this week. From where we are
you have explained to him, he has come to see that the thank God I didn't do it last week. I'm not doing it again. Because some of you now, the truth has come to you. How did Jesus know there was a cut tied down? Because the spirit of truth told him there's a cut. The spirit of truth can even tell you what somebody will ask you. What somebody is about to say to you. That's why the Bible says Jesus knew all men and didn't need anyone to tell him about me. Because the spirit of says the spirit of truth manifest yourself in my life. Say, say, oh God, Self my maker. My life. Oh God, my maker. Let the spirit of truth. Let the spirit of truth. From this night forward. From this night forward. By your mercy in my life. By your mercy in my life. Let the spirit of truth manifest in my life. Forevermore. Let it manifest in my life forevermore. Let it manifest in my life forevermore. Let it manifest in my life forevermore. Let the spirit of truth manifest in my life forevermore. Let the spirit of truth manifest in my life forevermore. Let the spirit of truth manifest in my life forevermore. Let it manifest in my life forevermore. Let the spirit of truth reveal to me why I'm like this. Let him reveal to me. Let him reveal to me. Yes, sir. Some years ago, we bought a car for one of our pastors because he left us to buy her a car. But it's amazing that we chose the wrong car. Because two weeks after she got the car, she had an accident with the car. Yeah. We didn't listen to the spirit of truth. We were listening to the person selling the car to us. That the mileage is good, everything is good. Oh, no. If we had listened to the spirit of truth, we would have known that this car was prepared for an accident two weeks from now. Thank God nothing happened. Because people would have been saying, oh, pastor, who's junior pastor for rituals? To any guy, you might say this, let the spirit, father, let the spirit of truth reveal to be the truth about this car. You want to move into a house, all you are interested in saying, let the spirit of truth tell people the truth concerning this house. Let the spirit of truth tell me the truth concerning this house. Let the spirit of truth reveal to me the truth about this apartment, about this house, about this area that I want to move to. Yes, sir. Let the spirit of truth reveal the truth about my children to me. You see, Rebecca inquired. Inquired that she was told the truth. The spirit of truth told her the truth. You see, truth is not in the hands of God. It's in the hands of this angel called the spirit of truth. When you study from Genesis to Revelation, each time men needed guidance, they will not talk to spirits. They will go and meet men that spirits talk to. Men that hear spirits. The Bible says, he that heart and ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. But the things, the things the spirit is saying to the churches were things the spirit was speaking to the angel of the churches, which is to the pastor. God chose this person to be your pastor instead of you is because this person can hear the spirit of truth. He may not know how to preach the blessed sermon, but he can hear the spirit of truth tell the truth. You are the most high. You are Let's sing it to him, then we close. You are the most high. Oh, my God. 